This is easily one of the most neglected aspects of any business, and ironically, it's also one of the most important. Chances are, if you're not doing it correctly, then it's probably costing you money. Now, I know, I know, enough with the mystery. What exactly am I talking about? Today, guys, we're gonna be talking about client onboarding and why it's the most important process in your business and how to automate it using AI. But before I talk about why onboarding is crucial to your success as a business, I just wanna say for those of you that stick around, you will be getting full access to the templates and the automations that I share in this video. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Now, onboarding is one of those things that for beginners, they just kind of gloss over. You know, they're more focused on signing that client and then delivering on the service, but they never actually really focus on on their onboarding. But any seasoned business owner knows how important the onboarding process is. See, the issue with today's agency world is that way too many people focus on getting new clients rather than trying to retain the clients that they have. Your clients, you should be building lifelong relationships with them. You know, these should be the same clients that you're working with in 30, 40 years. Because of this, they're constantly having to find new ways to replace the clients that they're losing. And it just kind of results in this uphill battle of constant outreach, high churn rates, and honestly, just endless headache. Now you may be wondering, but Zoro, what does onboarding have to do with my clients leaving? This is when I'm bringing my clients on, not saying goodbye to them. Well, let me enlighten you, my young Padawan. Your onboarding process is either the ultimate saving grace or your first nail in the coffin. Your onboarding process is your client's first impression of your service delivery. Think about it from a customer perspective. You just signed with an email marketing agency that's promised, you know, they're gonna scale your e-commerce business to the moon. You're excited, you sign with them. They charge you $2,500 a month. It's already pretty steep, but they have great case studies and you're ready to get it moving. After they sign you on, you don't hear from them for two days. They're taking forever to respond. The communication is all over the place. They're getting documents wrong and it just takes them forever to actually get assets over to you. What kind of picture would that paint in your mind? You just gave them a large sum of money and already you're starting to wonder, did I make the right choice? That's why onboarding is so important. Creating a quality customer experience early on is a big win for the customer and it paints your company in a positive light. It shows the client that you operate with speed and professionalism, which ensures them that they made the right choice signing on with you. Whenever there isn't a strong onboarding process in place, that's the first nail in the coffin and it just kind of builds up from there as they see more problems further down the line. However, the main issue with onboarding is that depending on the type of business that you run, it can be very, very time consuming. You know how it is. You're getting assets from the clients, you're sending them forms and documentation, booking in onboarding calls, generating creative assets, and it can just take up a lot of time. So today we're going to solve that issue. I'm gonna take you through a very basic onboarding automation, and then I'm also gonna show you guys how you can make it a little bit more advanced depending on the type of agency that you run, whether it's some kind of creative agency, like a content agency or an email marketing agency. And I'm also going to take you through an automation that we built for a client of ours, Eamon, over at TickScale that saved him over 40 hours per month. And it's all just from that one automation. Again, before we hop into it, if you watch to the end, you'll get full access to the written guide as well as the templates to the automations. So make sure you stick around. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop onto the computer. All right, guys. So we are on the computer inside of Zapier. If you don't have Zapier already, I would recommend signing up, maybe get a free trial of one of the paid versions because it is a very easy way for beginners to build automations. And you can also get pretty advanced advanced with it as well. Now to start out with this, we're going to start with a very simple onboarding automation just to get, you know, the necessities out of the way. And because everybody's agency is different, I'm going to show you guys something that I built for a client as well as how you can flesh out your onboarding process just a little bit more so you can provide that additional value. So first things first, we have to start when the client is signed, when they pay their invoice or when they sign the contract. Now, a lot of you who are just starting are going to be using something like Signaturely. Personally, I've moved over to PandaDoc because you can embed the invoices inside the contract on there. So it makes it super easy. If you're using PandaDoc, you're going to have it right here as your trigger. All that you need to do is select the app and the event, which in this case is Signaturely. And the event that we're going to be starting with is the document completed event. I'm going to go ahead and click continue. I'm going to go ahead and connect your email. And then from there, you're going to find a document that works, right? So we're just going to find this document. You can click find new records. It's fine. I'm going to continue with this one right here. So there we'll have our emails and everything like that. Now, the second step is going to be with Slack. We're going to create a channel in Slack. I don't know where you communicate with your clients. It could be on Discord, wherever it might be. As long as it's on Zapier, then you should be completely fine. Personally, I prefer Slack. I think it's a more professional way to communicate with clients and it's a lot easier to keep track of our client pool. But really, this is up to personal preference. So all you need to really do is click this little plus sign. You can add a step and then you can put in, you know, Slack. Super simple, app and event, Slack. The event is going to be create channel, pretty straightforward. And then we're going to hit continue after we connect our account and the channel name 
what you can do here is you can now insert the data from the signed contract. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and find name. I'm gonna go into this search field, I'm gonna find name. So now from here, once we have the channel name, I'm just gonna name it after the particular client that we're signing. So we have document completed right here. We got my boy, Danny. So we're just gonna go ahead and click this little name field. And essentially now, anytime a channel is created, it'll populate with their name. So we know which client it's for. We're gonna continue and you can go ahead and test this step as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it just to show you guys that it works. Cool. So now the channel is created. Now it's going to be a public channel, but no one will be able to see it. And you can always switch it to a private channel later on if you're concerned about client privacy. Even if it is a public channel though, unless people are added to it, they won't be able to see it unless they add themselves. So that's perfectly fine. You can change it to a private channel, but we've got that channel created in Slack and this will all happen automatically. As soon as the contract is signed, a new channel will be created. Okay, so on our closing calls, we usually get our client into Slack right then and there, but I realized that a lot of you might not do that. And to make it a little bit more beginner friendly, I went ahead and switched some things around. So instead of inviting them to the Slack, because the last thing that you want is their user not existing and then the zap not actually working. So we're gonna go ahead and skip that step and we changed it around just a little bit, moving a little bit further down my automation process. The next process is sending them an email. So the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is click on send email after we've added Gmail. You can add your Gmail account, super easy, super simple. You're gonna send the two and then right here, you're just going to populate their email. Very easy. I'm gonna go ahead and throw his email right there. <clears throat> you can CC anybody that you want to. You know, I might loop my partner into this. I might say George, rtable.co. Cool. There is my partner. You can add the from, you know, default email address that you'd like to send from. And from name, Zorro the Wiz. Gonna say that. And then the reply to. Now the subject obviously is the required. So you can say something like welcome to synth. AI. And then right down here, you can write the body of your email. Now you can either write this in HTML or just plain text. It's really up to you. But here you can include very important parts of your onboarding process. So you can just say something like, hey, and then you can add the name or something like that. Welcome. Just wanted to take a second to welcome you to synth. Now, if your you know document allows it, ideally you just put their first name here, but it doesn't really matter too much. We're incredibly excited to work with you on this. Here is everything you need to get started. Okay. Now, of course you can make it a little bit more friendly and warm than that, but I'm just trying to get, move it for the sake of the video. You can put something like first fill out the following onboarding form. You can put that right there. Go ahead and copy this and move over here. Throw that right there. Second, be sure to join our private Slack and you can include the Slack invite right here or whatever invite your messaging system you're using. And you can say third, schedule your onboarding call here. And then you can throw your calendar. Calendly right there. And you can say, thanks, thanks so much. Looking forward to speaking. Boom, all right, cool. So now we have an onboarding email. I'm not gonna uh, test this because I don't wanna send it to Danny, but we're just gonna go ahead and skip this test. You can test the step if you want with your own email just to make sure that it's sending in the proper format that you'd like it to be sending in. We're gonna skip it for now though. Now next, with automations and everything like that, we usually like to have a Google Drive folder for them. So that way we can have all of their assets. So what we're going to go ahead and do is in Google Drive, we're going to go ahead and create a folder. Now we're going to go ahead and click continue. Obviously, you know, connect our account, choose your drive, it's just going to say my Google Drive. From here, you can choose a parent folder, which in this case, we're just going to go ahead and use the content folder. And second, for the folder name, we're going to go ahead and just use the name. It might be Danny LeBrant, and then we'll say AI and automations. Awesome. And then we can go ahead and continue. If you'd like to test and make sure that it actually creates the folder, you can do that but in this case, I'm just gonna skip the test as well. So there we have the next step. And finally, I wanna be notified when people are onboarded. I wanna be notified. So from here, what you can do is add an SMS step from Zapier and you can just choose a random number to send you a number from. And in the message, you can say something like, hey, Sean, just wanted to let you know that here, we can add this right there, has been sent the onboarding information, be on the lookout for. And just to show you guys this works, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Or now we're gonna go ahead and test it. So we're gonna continue. We're gonna go ahead and click 
test step and it's going to send us an sms message let's see if we get it boom right there baby it says hey sean just wanted to let you know let me see if i can get that in the camera there but it is good it does send the message so that way you can be notified when people are you know onboarded now guys this is just part one okay this is onboarding part one so now we have them they have they have all their necessary information maybe we send them the google form everything like that but what happens when they fill out that google form this is where i'm going to go into the automation that we built for our client so this is just part one you know getting them all the necessary information that they need but now we have to move into the next step now if you guys want to stop here you can go ahead and just click publish very simple onboarding automation super easy five steps not difficult at all now let's go ahead and hop over into the other onboarding automation that we built for Amen. So I'm not going to click on any of these because I don't want to give away Amen's sauce just out of respect. But to give you guys a little bit of context, Amen likes to create creative briefs for his clients whenever he onboards them. And they're these, you know, 20, 30 page Google Docs that go over their entire ICP and, you know, video stuff. So what we did was we, you know, automated that with AI. And as you can see, there's a lot more steps. So all of these are chat GPT, you know, like open AI calls. Now, the reason there are so many of them is because we kept on hitting the token limit, but it's absolutely fine because what it does generate is an absolutely cracked 30, 40 page document that goes into detail with everything. So it's all broken down right here. This is what we did for Amen. Now, what can you do for yourself? So once you have your onboarding form, whether you're doing email marketing or AI automation, whatever it might be, I'll give you guys a look at our onboarding form real quick. So, you know, we'll ask for their name. How long do you currently spend doing the process that you're looking to automate software stack, all of that kind of stuff. So what you can do is you can create another zap and you can put Google forms as the trigger. So it's going to be a new form response. All right. We know that I added it's fake onboarding here because obviously this is a test, but you can put your onboarding form right there. Now this text formatter, you don't really need that. That's just to show shorten the text just to make sure it's in chunks. That way it's easier for the AI to read and it doesn't take as many tokens. But what you can do, let's just say you're doing email marketing, right? And let's say every time you, you know, bring on a client for email marketing, you create 50 different email angles, you create two like test emails, whatever that might be. What you can do is every time there is a new form response, you can add a chat GPT step and you can add whatever the next step might be to generate what you need for your document. Scrolling down here, obviously a lot of this was needed for Amen, but that I digress. And at the end, what it did was it created a document from text inside of Google Docs, and you can add this to their folder as well. So when they fill out the onboarding document, this same Google folder that we created in Google Drive, it can add that document to that Google folder. This is why we set up these automations. So the new form is going to response in Google Forms or type form, whatever you might use. You can use OpenAI or whatever you might use to you know generate the document or whatever it is that you might need. And then finally, you can end off by putting it inside of Google docs. It just makes it super easy. Heck, you can take out this create folder in Google Drive step and you can add it to this as well instead of just creating it straight off. So this is part one of the automation. You know, you have your necessities, you have the signed contract, you have them in your Slack channel, you sent them an onboarding email, you have their folder created, you know that they're onboarded. And now when they actually fill out that onboarding form, you're generating any assets that you might need for them. For example, it might be, you know, a mid journey API call to generate them image assets or something like that, whatever it might take. Now this, is completely up to you guys. You can keep it super simple. This is a great place to start, but if you want to take it a step further and automate that process even more, you can add these creative steps and generate something that's a lot more complex. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Super simple, very straightforward onboarding automation. You should be able to go out on your own right now and build a killer onboarding process for your agency. If you guys want a written guide and access to some templates, be sure to click the link either in the first pinned comment or in the description down below. And if you're a business owner and you're looking to implement automations into your business to save time or increase your profit margins. You can also book a call with our agency down below. It's completely free, no strings attached. We won't try to sell you on anything just to see if you're a good fit. Finally, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more content from me, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss another upload. And without further ado, I will see you guys later. Peace.